uh, in, you know, for large scale organizations. Well, that, real quick, I apologize. Yeah. It is interrupted by. We have rebranded my podcast to uh, Interrupted uh, by Gary B. So I apologize up front if I interrupt. It's only out of sheer excitement mm. and trying to be as efficient with our time as possible. Mm. Uh, I'm so excited you're on the show. Why don't you tell uh, the Vayner Nation um, who you are and a little bit about your career? And then I'm, I'm obviously very curious to uh, how you thought about the book. And, and then obviously I'd love to get your take on you know current events and shoot the shit here a little bit. So thanks sure. for being on. Sure, uh, I'm Steve Schwarzman. Uh, I'm uh, professionally uh, the uh, fa- co-founder and uh, chairman and CEO of uh, a company called Blackstone. Uh, Blackstone is the largest company in the world uh, that does um, what's called alternative investing. Uh, that's uh, private equity, uh, where we're one of the largest in the world. I think yep. we're the largest uh, real estate uh, globally, we're the largest owner of real estate uh, globally. Uh, hedge funds, we're the largest allocator to hedge funds uh, in the world. Uh, leverage credit, uh, where we extend loans and and other types of securities to people who want to borrow money. Not the largest in the world on that because you were on uh, a no, roll there. No, we're one of the top two. <laughs> Understood. Uh, a little that. more work on that one. Yeah, we're, we, <laughs> Fair we, enough. we got more work to do. <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, we, we, we do other things um, like invest in life science um, uh, and growth uh, equity, which are mm-hmm. newer type companies. Yep. Uh, and we grow very rapidly. We've got about... Uh, uh, 550 billion dollars of uh, assets, which wow. won't may, mean much to most uh, 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 listeners, yep. uh, but but it's a lot uh, uh, for sure. Uh, and we're one of the most uh, profitable companies uh, in money management in, in the world. And we have what's called a market value, which is what the stock market values yep. us. Uh, at about uh, sixty-eight uh, billion dollars, and I started the company with four hundred thousand. So, in the, in the capitalist world, and when did you start that? Nineteen eighty-five. Keep going. So that's viewed as a success. Yes. Uh, so, so that's what all I, worlds, by the way, would view that as a success. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I do professionally. Understood. And personally, uh, and and um, I, I also um, do a lot of stuff with philanthropy, uh, which is a long word. Yes. Uh, but basically. Uh, I, I give um, money to start uh, really unusual things. Um, I started a program in China uh, called the Schwarzman Scholars. And, and what it is, it's like the Rhodes Scholarship, uh, where we take uh, students who are extraordinary, uh, who've already graduated from uh, university for a graduate degree, uh, master's in global affairs, and we bring them to China to... Uh, Schwarzman College, Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, like an Oxford, Cambridge uh, type of college where the students live there, they take their meals there, uh, they have classes uh, uh, there, uh, and and, um, 40% of the students are from the United States, 20% are from China, uh, and uh, 40% are from other countries. So basically there are 41 countries right now uh, sending students. When did you start that? uh, Started that... uh, Came up with the idea in 2011. Our first class graduated in uh, uh, 2017. So we, we, we have roughly about 150 students now. Uh, our max capacity as we're growing it uh, is 200. These kids are astonishing. Clearly. Uh, really astonishing. And we, 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 we've got sponsorship from the president of China, the president of the United States. It's, it's a very unusual thing. So. Uh, uh, that that r- takes some of my time, but yep. but I've also started some other things around uh, artificial intelligence uh, because I'm concerned about the impact of AI uh, in terms of disruption in the workforce. Well, uh, it's a foregone conclusion. Uh, well, just like uh, machines for farming. Th- that's also true. Yes, uh, and so I'm Thank looking you. at that 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 situation. And uh, by the same token, AI can do some astonishingly positive things. So, so I, I um, uh, ended up uh, doing a very large donation uh, to 
uh, MIT to start a new college of computing, which will, on the one hand, push the technology forward, but on the other hand, uh, be a, a, a place uh, where, where we can take people from around the world and figure out how to introduce this technology uh, on a basis where it does the minimum uh, damage uh, to, to society and, and people in terms of unemployment. And I've done something similar, uh, but a little different at Oxford University. Uh, and um, uh, there we started another AI ethics uh, thing, and I, I gave a big uh, uh, facility uh, for the humanities because Oxford, interestingly, has, uh, that's where it started. Yep. They're number one in the world, yep. uh, as MIT is in science. Uh, and uh, uh, Oxford's never had their humanities uh, departments together. Interesting. So, so this will be the first time Very we're cool. building a big performing arts center. We're going to use you know the humanities yep. to inform that. But importantly, in AI, uh, uh, because Oxford has got the number one philosophy department, ethics departments in the world, we're going to use that capability uh, to inform uh, how humans uh, react to... Uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Couple things, uh, LinkedIn. I know you guys are live, so please fire in your questions. I know that is very much the audience for this interview. Uh, Steve, take it all the way back. Where were you born, and what kind of kid were you? Uh, I, was, I was born in Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, and what kind of kid was I? I was. Are you athlete. a Philly sports fan? Uh, I was then, but they now. lost all the time. So <laughs> I've transferred my loyalty. When where are your current? I moved to where, New, where are your current to, loyalties? I moved to New York okay. in 1969. Fair enough. So, so good year for the Jets and the Mets. Well, and the Knicks. nobody can be for the Jets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it it's just requires too much loyalty for too many periods of too many decades. I've consist. I have not missed a snap of a New York Jets football game since 1982. Well, then then you were a masochist. Uh, <laughs> I, you know, it got so or bad. Or deeply loyal. I, 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 when they built a new stadium, I yes. thought it would be really lines? neat. Uh, yeah, yep. in the Meadowlands. I thought it'd be really neat to, to get a box and yes. go on a regular basis. Well, it's quite defeating. Yes. Uh, and, you know, so I give the... Um, the uh, the tickets away sure. for the most part by the end of a season. Did you, did you Jets and Giants or just Jets? Both. Understand. Yeah. By 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 the end of a season, nobody will take them. I understand. We, no, it has that's not been the best now, decade. Now that's for free. I understand. They won't take them. The market is supply and demand, my friend. Except the, the only <laughs> the, the only group that will take them actually, uh, none of my people will yeah. take them. But I give the tickets away to veterans. I understand. Uh, and you know disabled veterans. Yep. Uh, and they take them, and they have a good time. But I must tell you, uh, you know, you 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 have to be an optimist uh, uh, if you're a Jets fan, or you just love the process. You know, I think when you know when I think about your level of success or anybody else, there's just if one does not love the process, they have no shot. And I genuinely, you know, I have I spend so much time in control. It's it's actually fun to offset a little bit in being super passionate about something you don't have control over, which is why I've decided I'm gonna buy the New York Jets, because I want control back to my happiness. Well, a, fr a friend of mine, uh, uh, Woody Johnson, owns the team. I'm aware. And, and I, I try and give him some advice sometime, but um, apparently I'm not an effective salesman. <laughs> So you grew up in Philly. What kind of kid were you? Were you a good student? Were you an entrepreneur kind of hustler kid? Were, what kind of guy were you? Well, I, I, um, I had sort of two lives. Okay. The first was in the city um, mm -hmm. and, and until I was um, 14, and then the second was in the suburbs. So, so, so in the city, um, you know, I, I, was, uh, I was an athlete, um, uh, and uh, I was a good student. Uh, not the top of my class, but, you know, I try Solid. really hard. Um, and, and that's sort of what you did at that age. Um, was that a big conversation in the household? Like, be great at school? Uh, it was just assumed. Yeah, there that, was that, no conversation. Yes, there it was. was a dictatorship. It was um, a culture. Understood. Uh, of do and well. And where were you in the lineage? Were you the oldest? Middle? I was the oldest, you were yeah. The oldest, so yeah. even more so. Yeah, you have a little yeah. bit of pressure yeah. uh, on that. But, you know, I, I, I always remember... Uh, Sort of being outside and and um, you know competing at something. Right. Uh, you know, I lo I just loved uh, sports. Yep. And I moved to the suburbs, and um, it, you know it wasn't it wasn't as uh, difficult. I mean, I I grew up in an area where you know there were broken bottles all over. Yep. 
playgrounds and if you played yeah. soccer against somebody, something bad could happen yeah. to you. Uh, and in do, you the, feel, do you feel that those first 14 years in that kind of environment gave you some real advantages from a grit and kind of like EQ kind of sense? Absolutely. Yeah. If, if I hadn't been raised in a place like that, I wouldn't understand, you know, sort of, um, uh, I wouldn't have understood evil. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't have understood understood bad behavior. Yep. That that bad things can happen to nice people. Yep. Uh, the, uh, one of my my closest friend when I was young's father was uh, assassinated um, when uh, we were about ten uh, in some motel. Uh, I don't know what this guy was doing, but 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 my friend uh, had 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 a box, uh, you know, completely filled with money. I, I mean, I wasn't even given money. Yeah. So, so I was in a neighborhood that was um, somewhat, uh, I guess you would call it, challenged. Yep. Uh, and um, so that was um, uh, my mother wanted. And were your parents to, born here, or did they immigrate? Or, excuse me. Were your parents born here? Yes. In the U.S. Yeah, yeah. And before that, like who? Where? Where's my your great grandfather uh, came over from uh, from Austria on one side of the family, and the other. Uh, side was um, was was from the Ukraine understood in the 1880s understood uh, so, so um, um, you know when I moved to the suburbs geez things changed quickly everybody was like lovely and, yes you know I became you know president of the school and you know the top athlete and and um, life was good life was uh, 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 astonishingly good yes. uh, unexpectedly good uh, and has more or less uh, uh, remain so. It's very nice. uh, sort of interesting. Yep. And and if my uh, mother hadn't, you know, sort of beaten my dad up to to move because he didn't want to move uh, and he get us the, in a better school district. Yeah. She just did it for the school district. Yep. Uh, then that you know I, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. What um, what drew you to finance? Well, that was an accident. I okay. didn't know anything about finance. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, I got hired um, when, I, when I graduated uh, from college. and I, I didn't even have a job. What did you think you were going to do in those college years after school? I, I had actually, surprisingly, no idea. Why? Were you so focused on the enjoyment of those four years? Did you have so many interests you were crippled by that? Did you have a main interest that kind of faded towards the end of it? What was the variable there? No, I mean, I was interested in, in, in university, um, uh, in, in learning how to think, uh, excelling. Uh, you know, I, I, I wasn't um, a, a joiner uh, of organizations. I mean, my first um, um, uh, English paper, I got, I got uh, a, a 68. Uh, on Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. Uh, my second English paper, I got a 66. Uh, this was a trend even I could recognize. Mm -hmm. Was not so good. Yep. Uh, and if I continued, would, would result in my not being uh, uh, at university. Yes. And so, um, you know, I fortunately uh, had, a, had a, a teacher uh, called me in for a meeting and he, and he said, Mr. Schwarzman, he said, um, uh, we're here to talk about your English papers. I said, well, why, why, why would we do that? <laughs> uh, and, and he said, uh, uh, he said, so, so I, I said, uh, there's really no reason for a meeting. And he said, I, I don't understand why you would think that. I said, because um, I had nothing to say uh, and I said it poorly. Yeah. In those papers, and, what and he, he said, "By God, you're not stupid." Uh, uh, he said, "You just can't think, uh, and you can't write." Yep. Uh, he said, "So I can't teach you both at the same time. So I'll start off teaching you uh, how to uh, uh, to write. I'll give you the answer to the essays, and we'll teach you how to write." because you can't think and write at the same time. He said, then after you learn how to write, I'll teach you how to think. And so I ended up on Dean's List. I went to Yale, so it wasn't like a bad school. Sure. Uh, and I ended up on Dean's List, uh, uh, which is the top 10% of the class, uh, by the end of the first year. So I, I was interested in just sort of learning things. Steve, what do you think of the current state of how we package 
and process education? Well, I think I think education um, um, uh, is not doing a good job uh, for, no for 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 uh, the people it's intended uh, yep. to, to help, and and. Um, you know, there's probably a lot of reasons for that. Uh, you know, sort of uh, w- whether it's at uh, primary, secondary, or university is different. You know, we have some great universities, and so, so that's not a broken system in the way the primary, secondary. At the level of scale that you play in with the companies that you get involved in at the PE level or hedge fund level, you know, what, at that scale, I'm sure you recognize the connection point between large organizations in the business world and large organizations in the environment of education, Absolutely. right? I mean, the the it is stunning to me for what I do for a living, the complete inability for the Fortune 500 landscape to have adjusted to the communications infrastructure that the internet at this maturity level has created. It is, in your world, I, I do not believe the vast majority of your world yet has recognized the stunning amount of money that big brands waste every day on communication. And I'm talking to the delta of 90 you know, cents on the dollar. I often say once the activist investors actually understand, forget about printing right. on both sides of the paper or travel or cutting overhead, that the sheer money that the Fortune 500 landscape wastes every day on marketing, that it's gonna get really interesting. It's been the inability of Madison Avenue, you know, Wall Street, and the corporate landscape to adjust to the sheer speed of consumer behavior. There's a complete comp to the same thing on education. We continue to teach kids to memorize stuff when the information is literally on their phone. Yeah, well, as to the corporate world, um, you, know, you usually have a, a generational issue where the people who are in charge you know, aren't the people who've learned the, the breakthrough technologies that or, have happened that's over the last 20 or, years. Or Steve, the compensation that that leadership has doesn't, the infrastructure of short-term numbers and you know being able to cash out within two or three years after you're out of the position, even though you've only been there for two to three years, doesn't necessarily put CEOs in today's landscape in a position to actually care about the health of a business a decade from today. Well, that one I'll fight you on. Please. Because, because the person you see in that position has come up uh, through a variety of other positions. Mm-hmm. And people who spend their life doing something uh, aren't necessarily all short-term oriented. Uh, no, they're so, not. So, so they want their organization, just like you want your you know, podcast to be a winner. Well, let's play uh, that a little bit differently. It's very different to be an executive who spent 13 years within the McDonald's Inc. to then become the CMO, but then transfer and go work at 3G on Burger King is quite different than me being in perpetuity with my personal brand. Well, I'm in perpetuity with my personal brand at Blackstone. Sure, but uh, you've played, we're not talking about you and no, I. I understand. We're talking about executives that run right. companies but, who, who but, transact on stock price who, also can spend 15, 20 years to get to that point when they're really making economics. By the way, you'll appreciate this. I don't blame that. That's human behavior. I don't right. think that's a negative. But but but, but I think I, it's 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 a really interesting dynamic. That, that that's a separate subject than 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 introduction of uh, and effectiveness of technology, uh, in, you know, for large scale organizations. Well, that, real quick, I apologize. Yeah. It is interrupted by. Is, uh, no, no problem. You'll appreciate this, though. I think this is a fascinating dynamic. Yes, but it's also the reason that some, not all, this is always a some game, right? Right. Struggle with the taking the one step backwards to make the capital investments to have the patience around consumer behavior in lieu of milking out the infrastructure costs that they've invested in within a half decade period. I think it's, um, to the extent that that's true, I don't think it's an economic decision. I think it's a lack of familiarity. Uh, you know, if, if people understood uh, how profoundly, you know, they, they, could, they could, you know, uh, penetrate a market or be effective, they would do it. Steve, uh, I, because I, it, because it, the please. other problem is, yeah. if you're not doing it and somebody else is, you're going to be severely damaged. So, so there is some rough yeah, frontier I, justice. I, I think here. It's, a, it's a game of like, where's the balance 
in the subconscious, let alone the conscious of the individual that's leading yes. on their balance between legacy and currency. Yes. Well, also comfort. Um, yeah, in other fair. words, what, 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 what? No, no, that's very fair because I think an innovating entrepreneur, she or he is only comfort in chaos, whereas a very type A operator is only comfort in a very different dynamic. Yeah, that, entrepreneurs don't, don't believe they're in chaos. You may think so, but they don't. Uh, the reason, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur yourself uh, of a certain type uh, or, or myself, you, you only make decisions when you feel you're right. 100%. You, you, you don't make decisions, you know, to take risk. I this idea agree with you more. that entrepreneurs are, are risk takers is complete. BS. I am a buyer. They're, they're risk That's takers. That's bullshit for the people that watch the right. show. Go uh, ahead. They're, they're, they're risk takers from the perspective of people who are watching them, 100%. not from them themselves. And, and, and so, you know, nobody We is, think it's the reverse. Uh, uh, yes. We think the person that's going this way is actually vulnerable. Right. And, and, and so, you know, uh, people who are entrepreneurs just, just see the, the, the same facts uh, differently or they... Or they actually obtain different facts 100%. and those different facts show them something that's wholly logical uh, in my own case I, I can explain everything I do uh, exactly why I do it and I'm I'm also totally open to someone uh, proving that that's incorrect because I don't want to be wrong but when I see it uh, and if other people you know either don't sometimes you know what's interesting they see it but they don't want to change what they're doing it's it's the nature of the human being I, I've found out now uh, because I you know I'm not 25 years old uh, so I've had a lot of observations yes. uh, of the human condition that that even with a wonderfully conceived new thing if you describe it to people hardly anybody else will follow uh, because they're comfortable doing whatever they're doing. It goes they're back to the point earlier of the executives running these companies in a lot of ways, in my opinion. I believe that the discomfort, and then, look, the humans are a game of vested interests in the subconscious or conscious. It just is. It's an animalistic game. It's, it's I, I don't quite understand it fully. Uh, I'm grateful that exists because it's <laughs> it's, it's 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 helped uh, my little corner uh, let me, let me, I, I'm sorry, of, of the world. In this perspective of watching operators, who, give me a couple of your favorite operators in the balance of let's call let's sum up what we're talking about right now: the black and white versus the gray of operations and strategy. Who who's stood out? Some of the investments you've made that you've watched from afar that have really, as you've gotten closer and watched you've just been fond of or, or thought were unique or interesting? Well, that I, I actually don't encounter people in that way and, and think about them. Okay. Uh, you know, when, when I was younger, um, there was a guy operating uh, w within um, th that now obsolete uh, world who was the head of uh, uh, a G named Jack Welsh. Yes. And, and and he looked at everything uh, as if it was completely new. Uh, he listened to everyone intensely. Uh, he, he, he had this unique ability, still does, he's still alive, uh, to, to interrogate somebody and learn everything they knew in the shortest period of time I have ever seen. And then he'd take that on board and do that with a succession of people and then um, come to a conclusion that an organization was doing something right or wrong, could do better, uh, should go in a different thing. And what he would do was, was challenge and push them to do that. And he would go wherever those insights uh, were. He'd, this, this is uh, a completely courageous person with a giant brain, endless energy, uh, and took that company into the largest uh, mar market value uh, the time, uh, because um, it, it, the just extraordinary nature uh, of, 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 of the person. No question. And, and, and um, you know, I, I, I met him 
before he had his job at the top, and I was asked by the head of his company to teach him uh, finance. Interesting. That took like two days and a limited number of hours, and he could suck out of my brain anything I had in there, Love even it. stuff I didn't know, and Love off that. he went. Uh, and occasionally you run into these uh, extraordinary uh, human Why'd beings. Why'd you read the book? I, I wrote the book um, be, be, because uh, starting, um, you know, like about seven to ten years ago, people, instead of my uh, uh, going and selling them products that we had, uh, yeah. Uh, I'd meet somebody at the top in particular. It was an incident uh, when I was in the Middle East with the head of a very large, uh, what they call sovereign wealth fund, mm -hmm. which is savings uh, of their country. Yes. Uh, and, you know, he, he was new. And, uh, you know, I, I had, um, you know, an introduction. I was the first person he was going to meet outside of his world before he was um, appointed. Uh, and, you know, instead of a five-minute handshake, uh, you know, he wanted to know how to run his organization better because he wasn't experienced. And so I ended up spending two and a half hours sort of telling yeah, him how to do yeah. stuff. Yeah. And, and you know, so for me, that's pretty easy. Yep. Uh, you know, that's what I do. What I mean, do. You know, so I, I get it. You certainly could do that. And, and uh, that surprised everybody because that, that, that's not what was supposed to happen. And then uh, as I would go around the world, which I do, meeting uh, uh, groups of uh, people who give us money, mm -hmm. well, all of a sudden nobody wanted to hear uh, uh, about our products. And, and this particular guy, the first guy was very funny. I tried to sell him something in the middle of, of, of showing him what he ought to be doing. And he said, please, uh, Mr. Schwarzman, don't, don't waste my time. <laughs> he, he, he said, we'll buy your products anyhow. Your time is too precious for me. I want to, be to on the know, sales pitch. Let right, me continue to do education. a sales pitch. I totally so what happened is so nobody, that beca that became the seed of like there there's something there. Yeah, and what happened is that started happening everywhere I went, and then I realized um, that I was spending two and a half hours <laughs> every time I was seeing somebody, and and if I wrote it down. Uh, you know, then you I could just give time. him the book. It would save me the time. So, <laughs> so, so it's what a happens, time arbitrage. Right, that's what I it was. That. So so what happens? Now I end up being here talking about it. So that's like another hour of my life. I totally life. get so it. So I basically <laughs> blew it. Uh, Can you I know. ask you a funny question? You know, and I think this will help the audience. How much, how much competitive mm -hmm. spirit do you have in you for the book to do well? Oh, I, I am exceptionally... Uh, I kind of figured, right? Competitive, like, yes. You know, it's clearly not an economic play. The the spirit is back to process or back to loving a game. Like, there's a big part of your juice. I mean, for you to be here, there's a big part of your juices to make it successful. Yeah. If you're you going to do something, you anything, it. doesn't yeah. matter what it is, there are a limited number of things you can do in life. That's right. Uh, and if you're going to do one, you better crush it. Yep, uh, I agree. Right, and, 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 and that's part of what I say say in the book. If you're going to do something, uh, because you have limited time, it, it should be great. Uh, it's, what what new? Uh, I'm very curious about this. In in the last, let's call it, let's give it a number, two to three years. What what technology? What app? Uh, maybe Alexa. Like, has what modern technology uh, have you enjoyed using on a personal level? Well. Um, you know, I was uh, a technological, uh, technological uh, illiterate, and um, you know, basically until about four years ago, I was using a flip phone. Love you. Uh, and I, do you still have that flip phone? I'd love to flip it on eBay. You know, I, I actually have a few of them because they're so obsolete that we had to buy the last batch of them. Were, were uh, you were you in this category of some of my friends that I love to raz, where you were getting your emails printed out for you? Um, or was it not I, that extreme? Because I, I have a couple of dear friends who are like a little further along in their careers and I was in a meeting three years ago and in walks an admin with a stack of papers and I could see the first top one and I said, brother, there's no way you're printing your emails. And he said, yeah. 
I said, that's fucking amazing. Well, right. It, it, it Were is, you I, in that category? Because that I, would excite me. I, I actually have somebody at our um, <laughs> at our management committee meetings who has that stack brought in <laughs> during the meeting. So, so, so no. I, I actually, uh, I, I read my emails. What about? But what about on fl in flip phone land? Only four years oh, ago, could, yeah. you didn't have it on your phone. Yeah, they would they would print those. <laughs> yes, thank you, but, but, thank you for but, going there, sir. But that you know, it, it became like. Uh, sort of crazy because as I'd travel around, there'd be people meeting me with these large <laughs> stacks of things. And and so I realized that was a loser. Uh, so, 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 so that's when I converted yep. uh, uh, to, 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 you know, the iPad, the iPhone. And now, and now, and now, um, you know, You're I, efficient. I, I can't believe I was so uh, stubborn, stupid. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so, so now, uh, you know, you, you sure. were, you know, sort of caught in traffic a little yep. bit and I was just sitting here doing, doing getting things done. Yeah. Efficiency. And, 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 and now, um, you know, it is fascinating that, uh, the people who generate, uh, statistics, uh, you know, for the U S government and other governments talk about lack of productivity uh, in the world as one of the major drivers for 100%. slower growth. Uh, anybody who um, is living today, uh, who, who has all of these devices, you're actually working 16, 18 hours a day. You're always on. Uh, it's, it's six, seven days a week. Uh, and the productivity for, I guess, what used to be called white collar uh, uh, workers, uh, but you know, you're wearing a sweatshirt top. Yes. So it's Same not white collar, you know, so that, that uh, the productivity is astonishing. The it's tools astonishing. are in place, my friend. It, it it's is, the craftsman. It, it's amazing. The tools are in place. Right. So, so but some of these jokers here are watching YouTube videos for three hours during that time. Well, that, that's not, for me but, <laughs> understood but, 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 <laughs> but you know it's amazing i just got uh, a picture as i was waiting for you yep uh from from one of my partners uh uh in, in tokyo um from new york in tokyo with a group of people you know everybody's smiling yep. you know it's it, it's like a group uh, uh thing so i can feel exactly what yeah, they're feeling that. it's context and it's instantaneous yeah speed and context it's so amazing John, you have questions you want a phone number or just yeah let's do a phone number i think somebody will have a thrill go ahead name what, what i would say Please. before we start with the question yeah. just in terms of competition my nature the, the book is a new york times bestseller is of amazon uh best uh book Cameron, of the year can you hold on one second Best book of the year, 2019. Uh, top 10 uh, nonfiction at uh, Barnes & Noble. So... You're making um, some damage. I just wanted to complete. Yeah. When that we're done thought. with this, we'll look at our as book scan as, numbers. As to long see as where we I can interrupt too. I, I, you, that is the punchline <laughs> of the show, sir. Cameron, how are you? You're on with Steve. Good. How are you, Gary? How, how are you, Steve? I'm okay. Thanks. Hey, I just want to say I'm from Philly too. I'm living right in the outskirts, uh, right in the suburbs as well. Very nice. Um, yeah. Um, all right, quick question. Just a little recap. Uh, I used to be a professional ballet dancer, and I came back home to take care of my sick mother. Um, and right now I'm in a position where I am being pressured to go back to school to get some sort of a graduate degree. By whom? Um, Cam? By, by my mother. By okay. my mother. So Keep going. I'm kind of in this weird... Anyway... So I'm in that, but I'm also, uh, I have entrepreneurial tendencies, and I, uh, I'm also um, represented, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm working as an actor as well. So I'm in this dual creative, but, you know, what are you going to do with money, but I have a side hustle. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out where my next play is right now, and how, how, how to really communicate with uh, people in my family to let them know it's going to be okay. Steve? Well, first, you're asking take. where to go, what to do? Yep. Well, that's um, that's a tough one because I don't know you that well. Uh, but Yeah, uh, I know. But, but, you we know, can change that. You can it, go to Steve's house tonight if you want. And I'm sure he'd be thrilled to have dinner. 
you, you, Steve, might, it's a wild you might show. be able to do that, but probably, <laughs> probably, probably not. Probably, probably not. But but on a general but, term, when you hear something like that, Steve, and obviously, well, you know, I mean, you get you, thrown questions like, what, "What's your? What are some of the thematics that well, you've seen if, from if, pattern recognition?" Yeah, if, if, if you years? if you you know, it sounds like um, you um, uh, you love the creative world uh, and and yeah. uh, and the performing arts uh, of one yeah. type or another. Uh, you know, so so uh, it was actually funny. I was sitting next to a lady yesterday who's in her mid seventies who was dancing uh, uh, for the Royal Ballet uh, when she was younger, uh, apropos of ballet. Uh, and um, uh, you probably uh, would do well uh, to stick uh, with with that um, uh, love. Uh, uh, because people tend to do well with things they love. Always. Uh, but uh, you don't have necessarily have to do it just as a creative uh, performer. Uh, you can take that uh, and, and look at ways where you can use uh, your, your entrepreneurial instincts uh, to take some aspect uh, of the performing arts and, and try and commercialize those. Uh, so so right. that way you can... You can um, uh, ba basically satisfy uh, two of your needs. Uh, going to graduate school depends what kind of graduate school. Typically, right. uh, getting more education uh, is a winner uh, in the game of life. Uh, Unless you're disguising because you don't want to do. Well, that's a separate thing. It uh, sure is. That's a separate thing. But but you know you know there's there's something you can come up with, but you ought to keep it not as a completely discontinuitous uh, event where you you know all of a sudden you're you know marketing marshmallows or something I mean it doesn't sound like yeah. a fit may not be cam I think your bigger issue at hand is if you have a sick mother and she's emotionally or theoretically or ideologically interested in you going to more school that's an awfully difficult position to put a human being into yeah. however under every circumstance, even this ridiculously difficult one, I am an absolute buyer of living your life to make yourself happy first, and then the people around you will have the co collateral effects of you finding your own happiness, either when you find your own happiness and success, they've said, they've cheered all along, or much more importantly to me, and the hidden game of this that I continue to see among society, I do not want people to have resentment towards their loved ones in a decade or two because they followed their path versus their own. Yeah. You were, whether you win or lose by going your route, in the end, your relationship with that loved one, whether they're still here or not, is always far greater because you must avoid that resentment at all costs. When you layer exactly. Steve's proper point that people tend to excel in the things they love, in the two things that matter the most, Financial viability, for sure, commerce, commercial. Yes, I'm a fan, I'm a capitalist. Number two, happiness. In this juxtaposition between the balance of happiness and finances, I'm always going with tie goes to the rudder to finance, excuse me, happiness. I want people to understand that. This is actually, without knowing you, very clear to me. However, you've gotta live with the consequences of it, not me, but I couldn't implore you more to execute against your own happiness uh, and, and, and hopefully uh, you can keep that conviction even when the crowd and the sidelines continue to cheer and or boo. Right, thank you Gary. And, and w one thing, you know, you've been such an inspiration. I've actually started a, a recording for a podcast to meet with people in the industry and t kind of taking your blueprint. And, Please um, do. You know, also my side hustle is creative um, I do tie dye for uh, friends and family and anybody else who wants any, um, and and so I love that. You know, Listen, kind of my, Cam, the anyway. The be uh, sorry to cut you off. It is interrupted by Gary Vee now. Uh, you know, I, yeah, that's right. I, I no, it's the, the key here is I wanted to say something. What I'm proud of you for yeah. is I live in a world, and we now live in a world with keyboard warriors and technology communication infrastructures where people just talk. People have always talked. Uh -huh. Now you can visually see it. We are at, people love to talk and not back up that talk with action. I'm proud of you for doing action, the podcast, the tie down. Continue to actually move and make and create and do. That is always a variable that unlocks serendipity and opportunity. Yeah, 
Thank you, brother. Thank Take you care. care. Let's get another call in. Steve, wh- what have we not touched on? We're gonna do another call, do a couple of more minutes. I know you're on a busy schedule. Anything we didn't touch on or, or things, you know, obviously one thing I love about this show is, you know, I, I've come to realize, I, I'm actually getting tested to see if I'm dyslexic. I cannot consume information I've come to realize in written form. And so I don't tend to read a lot of books, but I'm quite audio and I'm definitely visual. And, and I know Jack quite well and we're very friendly and we have a lot of similarities of like extracting information out of context, especially in person, forget it, off the charts. Um, but what I've loved about my audience is like, for me, I don't care how one learns or consumes, they need to be self-aware in how they do that. And so this is an audience that reads quite a bit of books. So I think it, we will convert some books out of this, but is there anything <laughs> anything that one needs to know about it or anything we haven't touched on? Tony and, Mazzulli. Who's this? Tony. Kevin? Tony. Tony. Uh, Tony. Tony, how are you? It's Gary Vaynerchuk. You're on with Steve Schwartzman. Hey, Gary, how are you? Hi, how are you doing, Steve? I'm hanging in there. Uh, thank you. Thank you for taking my call. So uh, I, just, I just have a question. I'm in, I've been a real estate broker for 15 years now, and I always had a passion for real estate development. And we just kind of fell into it by, by God, by uh, serendipity. We ended up assembling a huge development in New Rochelle, half a million square feet. And we got a financial partner to partner with us. And we're going to these uncharted territories. We met with um, related big, big real estate funds. And we're going to these uncharted territories. How do you kind of keep that confidence and <laughs> and grit within these new territories that we've never explored? Like I'm taking classes at NYU for development. I'm doing reading everything I can. But how do you keep that confidence and that game face when dealing with these big guys? Yeah, it's 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 um, when when you when you're doing something that's new. If if you're not confident. You know that's an inhibition to going there, so so the way you get competent uh, confident is learning things, uh, and there's nothing like having somebody around who actually knows what they're doing. Uh, and, yeah. And and so what 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 you should do uh, if you haven't already is is whether it's hire one or two people who really know and have been in that mm-hmm. environment, have seen whatever you're doing. Uh, mo- most things uh, aren't new; they're just new to you. Uh, yeah, a- and and that's normal. And uh, and to add on, the, even if they're new, the nuances and the pattern recognitions can be deployed from the past. Yes, every theory I have on this marketing waste is because everybody wasted money on radio when television became the platform. It's the yeah. same thing that's happening now. Yeah. It's complete pattern recognition. Continue, Steve. Uh, yeah. So so you know you you, you should. Uh, maybe bring on uh, one, one or two people in either a permanent or a part-time capacity uh, as, yeah, as, as, as an advisor. Yep. And, and of course- Or freelance. You know, like, you know, there's a lot yeah. of economic trades that can be done. You can back end them, you know, on your, there's a, you know, depending on the seniority and things of that nature. There's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot more ways to do it than people realize. But, but, exactly. but, but every, everything I, I do, I, I do it, from from a position of real comfort, not not of, not not of being worried, and and the reason is I've learned something that gets me to that point, and and yeah, and and you know to really push the button, and and go forward, you have to have that sense. You know, Tony, uh, it's uh, funny listening to Steve. I'm 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 kind of equating a connection point for me. I'm so narrow. I so stay in my lane. Like, it's really funny. Like, I never feel like I'm risking either. I really don't. Mm-hmm. I'm so yeah. in my lane. And I'm aware when I'm out of my lane. And if I can, you know, the times I've risked, there's such small risks that I can, I always, anytime I risk, go anywhere out of my lane, I'm basically betting something I can take to zero. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's because smart. you might, yeah, thank you, guys you, you might go to zero. Oh, uh, often you do. Right. But I like yeah. the, I'm paying for the context and the learning. Yes. And if I win, then it's a double mazel, but that's fine. Right. I've actually invested for the context extract. Right. Yeah. Tony, yeah, that's I think what we, did. we brought t- on another partner who who had some experience. Um, but then when we're in these conversations, I'm like, Tony, I hear something new let, and I look it up right yeah, away. Tony, on that front, honestly, this is a human game. If you went to the tippy yeah. top of related, who's my partner, Steve Ross, 
Like, yeah. if you just make fun of the Dolphins, you're already three fourths of the way there. <laughs> but, exactly. but, but Tony, I'm really, exactly. go, I'm really going honest there. Uh, you know, I think, yeah. I think people get intimidated way too much. This is just a human game. Here's my punchline: ninety seven percent of them are going to say no anyway. Yeah. You know, and if you stay in your lane, listen, my career has been built on the fact that the smartest people I've come across have reacted in very polarizing responses one way or the other. That, oh my God, I found this new uncharted guy, he's brilliant, or I just, this guy's crazy, he's completely wrong. And then by being right historically, the half that I lost up front, I've won double with. Yeah. Yep, so, to, so this is just about execution, brother. Whether they believe, right. people are so insecure about other people's judgments. I prefer, this is why I love the Jets so much, Steve. I prefer when people think I'm wrong or underestimate me to actually when they think that I'm right. Yeah, yeah, because ultimately that, it doesn't care. Brother, ultimately it doesn't yeah, care if Steve and I think you're smart or dumb or silly or unbelievable. The net result is going to be the judge and the jury, not somebody who's achieved something in the past. Yeah, thank God, because it, you're so right, because we did something that nobody else was doing. We, we went into Westchester to do development. I left the city doing brokerage. I said, the city's kind of maxed at, at its point right now, and there's so much competition. I see a shift of all the millennials when they're having kids. They're going to want to go to the suburbs but still have access to the city. So we went a half hour outside on the train line, a block yep. from the train into yep. New Rochelle, yep. where it was uncharted, nothing yep. was happening. Yep. And we assembled this huge project, and now all these big developers are coming four years later, and it's just a huge boom. And That's I great. saw that vision early on, and we were like the blue ocean strategy back then, but now it's now all the sharks are coming, so it's, it's so amazing. So the, the, thank the, you guys for that advice. You got it, Tony. We wish you a lot of success. Good luck, brother. Thank you. Steve, let's wrap up here. Well, I, I think um, you know, one of the things I was trying to, to teach people is, is to do things they like, because that's what you're good at. Um, you know, sort of be prepared, uh, you know, have foundational skills yes. that, that get you from yes. A to B and, and, and um, uh, be very careful of what, about what you choose to do, where you choose to deploy yourself yes. as, as, a, as a human resource and uh, wait for something that's really terrific uh, to come by. Where do you sit on patience? Do you uh, think about it a lot? You don't? It's in your lexicon? It's not? As a person, yes, uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm interpersonally impatient uh, because I'm. I always want to get to the next thing. That's why when you have a show based on interrupting people, I, I said, you know, I, I do that all the time. That's <laughs> it, what I do. I, you know, when I've had enough, uh, you know, I've, I've, yeah. I've learned what you're trying to bring value to them as well. Right. It's not a negative. It's a positive. Right. But, but, but in your own life. Um, that that you should wait until you see something that's got enormous potential, enormous running yes. room, uh, and and uh, you know because because you only can do one thing at once uh, with, ex- with excellence. Yes, uh, and yes. if you deploy yourself on a little thing, uh, you may be excellent, but you sort of get no place. That's right, where you uh, cap out, uh, and then something much much more interesting comes by. And you believe it's more interesting, but you can't get out of what you're doing because you've already committed. And a lot of people of success don't recognize that jumping off of something that is successful already for this other opportunity is the right move, but they're incapable of the step backwards for two forward. Yes, but you you always have to be measuring. Always. uh, The the feel. Uh, Whenever we go into something, I always say, how wonderful can this be? How big? Can this be? Yes. Uh, are all the resources there? Money, the idea. Steve, where have, the where have you made mistakes? What, what, what's the what's the pat? So for me, the mistakes early in my career were, uh, I, I the first three companies I invested in after building a wine business for my family were Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr, and well pre IPO. So I'm like, oh, I'm a I'm a genius, right? Like, but then what I realized was, oh. In the early days, I was betting on Mark and David and Jack and Ev as much as the idea. When they hit, I, I started realizing that I was unbelievably consumer centric and I could see things that would win. One of my biggest losses, an app called Yobongo, ended up being Tinder three years later. I was right about the thesis. 
I was wrong about the executive and I needed, I needed to learn that, you know, cause I would always put myself in the jockey position. I would know how to operate it. So I needed to learn that. That's where I made a lot of my mistakes. The concept was right, the operator was wrong, especially at that early of a stage. When you go later, it's a little bit easier. Did you have a common mistake early there, in your there, career? There, there, there's always a learning curve. Yes, always. When you're younger, always. when you're in your 20s, you're, you're at a lot of risk yes, because you don't know enough yet. Not that you're just as smart as you ever will be. I agree. But you you don't have the context Agreed. To, to make those decisions. Do you, I apologize, do you then believe what, uh, that that's a very good decade to actually be in very high risk, high reward, happiness genre, to taste a lot of things because that's a very opportune time in theory about accountabilities and relationships and many other variables? The, do you think that kids at 22 to 30 are being too conservative over the last several decades because they're supposed to now be in the real world versus actually taking advantage of that decade with the overlay of gathering context. I think I think it's a it's it's a high risk strategy uh, to take the approach that you're talking uh-huh. about because if you just stumble from mistake from mistake and, and and you're not particularly gifted like yourself, where you can't self correct, um, that that you end up with no fundamental skills of Understood. any type, uh, and then you're like a lost soul. Understood. Uh, in your thirties, so 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 I think. Um, but you would agree with me that I, many I, struggle with the relationship with time, that being in your 30s is still uncomfortably young. Yes, but but I was never uh, smarter than what I was 32. That's your man. Is that your? Is that the number? Uh, yeah, that's when you think you're Shit. the smartest person in the world. 32. Uh, you know when you're 32. Because fuck, uh, at 44, now, now, I think I am. Now, now the fact. <laughs> that, now the fact is, you're not. <laughs> but but you've accumulated enough, enough knowledge context. and enough delusion, and you have such enormous crushing energy. Yes. Uh, T. Rock, how old are you? That. Yeah. Understood. Keep going, Steve. Sorry. Right. So 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 um, that that's that's in effect when you may be extremely potent, uh, but you also may be extremely dangerous. Uh, let, let me uh, let me wrap up here because I see the team's looking at me and I'm sure you have to go and I appreciate your extra time. A uh, couple random questions. Are you on TikTok? Uh, no, but, uh, but 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 I know the guy who runs TikTok. I mean, so that's that makes just, enough. That makes just, all the sense in the world for this interview. That's as close as I got. To have TikTok. you gotten any? Have you gotten any context about it? Do you know what's going on in the ten to eighteen year old demo on that platform? Uh, no, I just know there there are limited time yep. period, uh, you know, shots. Yep. Uh, and you know the things growing like crazy uh, yep. globally. Yep. Uh, and you know that's all I know about Understood. it. Understood. What's your favorite emoji? Uh, my pr- favorite emoji is a heart. I, that's a very good answer. <laughs> Parting shot. Any any last thought as we get out of here? No. Um, you know, in terms of a parting shot, um, li- life can be really fantastic. Uh, you know, uh, but you have to have um, the ability to always be focused on, on something you can achieve. Uh, that's in your comfort zone. Self, are we talking self awareness right now? That pushes you. Uh, so, so it's a life of lifetime learning. Uh, How much it, do you think humility is a key ingredient to this level of success? I, th- I think humility comes with the, the the volume of of things that you do because. No matter how good you are, as you ramp up the Take volume, you'll make mistakes. Uh, and and so. Um, you know, all of us who have external success uh, have had uh, failures, misjudgments, yep. uh, and you shake your head and say, what a dummy yeah. am I? Yeah. Uh, and it's the dummy things. It's the fun stuff. Where you learn. I agree. Uh, uh, and Learning you know, how just, not to beat yourself up in those moments. Uh, well, you, you actually can't beat yourself up because they're so terrible. That, that you have to rescue yourself yeah. from that stuff. Yeah. Uh, and and that's, that's where you learn. Perspective. And, and driving uh, to make things better, make yourself better, uh, do things uh, almost uh, you know, like, the, like the ballet dancer. What does is, what is a perfect pas de deux look like? And imagining what those things can be. And then, and then going 
and creating them I agree. Uh, is, is what's lots of fun in life. Vayner Nation, buy Steve's book because I want him and his crew to know that a lot of sales came from this show uh, because I want the leverage of legacy uh, and I really, really, really appreciate your time, Steve, and continued health and success. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Take care. Good. Bye, everyone.